using mobile apps. All right. So oh, that's not. Welcome on stage. Thank you. So I, I wanted to start with a show of hands. In the past year or two, how many of you have installed a secure messaging app on your phone? Okay. Now, so I guess to start again and introduce myself, um, my name is Runa Sandvik. I work for a US nonprofit called the Freedom of the Press Foundation. It's about two and a half years old, um, and we do a lot of different things. We help organizations raise funds um, if they're not able to do so themselves. Um, we help Tails, we help the Tor Project. We also do help WikiLeaks. So if you really want to donate to WikiLeaks, but you can't do it the normal visa way, you can donate to Freedom of the Press, and we will give that money to WikiLeaks. A part of the work that we're also doing is developing SecureDrop, which is an anonymous open source whistleblowing submission system that uses Tor to allow people to safely and anonymously upload documents to journalists. And the idea here is that there is no link between who's uploading the documents and who's receiving them, so you can't really tell who's the source. Um, unless there's, of course, some revealing information in the documents that are being uploaded. And we currently have SecureDrop in about 15 newsrooms with probably five or 10 more to come in the next couple of months. Um, there's three organizations in Denmark that are using SecureDrop right now. There's one in Norway and zero in Sweden. Uh, but I'm hoping that will change in a couple of months. So. With all the work that I've done over the past four years, looking at digital security tools, teaching journalists how to be secure online, reviewing different products, I've come across a lot of, a lot of really bad stuff, a lot of really sort of sneaky, snake oily type products. And I'm getting really tired of it. And so I figured it would be fun to put together a talk, um, pointing out some of these apps, and also talking a bit about why we have this problem with all of these apps that aren't really what they say they are. So the term NSA proof has really, I guess, increased in use over the past year. There's suddenly a lot of articles talking about NSA proof email services, NSA proof uh, chat applications, NSA proof this, NSA proof that. And I think we can sort of thank Snowden, I guess, for raising awareness um, about this abuse by the NSA. Um, but we can also thank journalists and their editors for actually using this word. And I think there's, there's two reasons why this term has become so popular. I think on one end, it sounds really fancy for a journalist to write an article and say, here's this new super secure app, it's NSA proof. Or here's an email service, it's NSA proof. It sounds really fancy, people will definitely go and click the article and read more about it. Um, and the other problem is that for a lot of users, they don't really know what they want. They can't really put that into words. They know that they want something that's secure, they want something that's easy to use, they don't necessarily want to pay for it, or they don't want to pay a lot. But what does that mean? For a lot of people, they don't know how many, how many bits to look for or what type of encryption to look for. They just know that they want it to be NSA-proof. And I think that is why this term has become so popular over the past year, because that is the only way that a lot of non-technical people can relate to what is going on and what they want. They want to be safe from the NSA. They want something that is NSA proof. So with that, there's a lot of services that have popped up where they're using marketing in such a way that they try and make it sound really fancy, they try and make it sound secure, and there's a lot of Techno babble, there's a lot of sort of fancy words, there's a lot of military grade encryption, and you don't always know what you get. 
And I think a good example is uh, this one. It's called Sneaky App that lets you anonymously share photos directly with your friends. Um, I came across this app while looking through a privacy policy for a different application uh, where a part of the uh, privacy policy said something about how cookies cannot be used to hack your computer. I thought it was a bit of an odd statement, so I looked for other apps that were using the same privacy policy, and I came across this one. I actually haven't tried it. Um, I think the closest one to this sneaky app is Secret, which some of you may have heard of. I think it launched earlier this year or last year where the whole idea is you can, you can take an image and you can add your secret to it, um, be it I saw a guy in a one piece at the airport and I think he looked ugly, for example. And you can put that out there. And you can see other secrets that um, your friends are sharing because you will automatically upload your contact list and so the app can define who do you know, who's your friends, but you won't see which friend shared which secret, um, just that someone within your social circle uploaded that note. Now, when Secret first started out, they, they did the marketing in such a way that they used the term anonymous. You can anonymously upload your secret to the service and no one can figure out that it was you. And I tried to talk to some of the secret guys about this and sort of point out that that is not exactly anonymous. There is something on the back end that actually lets you figure out who's uploading which secret. And I thought it was a bit of a strong language to use the word anonymous in this case. Um, and then they didn't really agree. They did point out that um, if they do receive requests from law enforcement, they do have to hand over data, and they also need to use Google Analytics for some stuff to figure out how people are using their services. Um, but they didn't really change the website or the language. Another one is PQ Chat. I think it's relatively new out of the UK. It's a post-quantum secure messenger with never the same technology. So this app is proprietary. Um, it was recently audited by a British security company. Um, I don't know if the audit report will be public. I tried asking about it and I got really vague, more sort of snake oily answers back. Now, this app, it, it, it looks great. The usability is really good. It is really fancy, but you don't know what you're getting unless what you want is sort of post-quantum secure. Another one is uh, Telegram, and I know Moxie looked at Telegram, I think, earlier this year um, in this sort of contest that they had. Telegram also claims that users can send messages securely, that there's no way to actually get the information. Um, they claim on their website that they will not share information with anyone, not even law enforcement. And I am not a lawyer, but if this company were to actually get a request from local law enforcement for any type of information about users, I'm not sure they could actually say no and just leave it at that. Um, another challenge with Telegram is that you, so you install the app, and without actually telling you, it will upload your whole contact list, name and numbers included, to their servers, and it stays there. And if you have any questions, if you want to get a hold of their press contact, for example, you actually have to install the app and use Telegram to get in touch with them. Um, I sort of harassed them on Twitter for a while until they actually answered. Um, and I also asked which jurisdictions they operate in, because this was a big part of their privacy policy, sort of a special, we only operate in these jurisdictions, but they didn't say which ones. And that's not a question they actually have answered. Um, Wicker is a fairly popular, I think, at this point. It's been around for a while. Um, secure messaging app uses military-grade encryption and has all of these buzzwords on the website. And I think what's interesting, in, in, in the case of Wicker, uh, there was a story, I think, earlier this year about how the one of the creators was approached by the FBI and sort of 
They had a bit of a conversation about whether or not Wicker wanted to accommodate law enforcement in terms of getting content or getting more information about users. Um, Wicker did not comply. I don't know if they've received any, any more requests uh, or not. But in terms of the information that is on the Wicker website, they're using all the buzzwords, and I think they're using it intentionally in the sense that Non-technical users don't always know what they want. So if you start listing the types of, like, the number of bits and using all the actual, real, technical terms for what the product is doing, non-technical users just won't get it, and it's going to look too complicated. It's not really going to be interesting, and they might not use it. So by using buzzwords, like military-grade encryption, that sounds really good, and by using the word NSA proof, sounds really good, you're more likely to actually get users who want to use your products. And then there's Whisper Systems by Moxie over there. It has a couple of products, Signal for iOS, Red Phone, and Tech Secure for, for Android for secure calls and secure text messages. And if you read on the websites, it's secure, it's easy, it's simple to use. There's not a lot of buzzwords. Um, it's free, it's easy to get started with. But it's using the same terms as a lot of other sites. It's using secure, it's using it's simple. It has all of these fancy photos. And I'll, I'll, I'll come back to why I keep repeating that it's using these terms in a couple of slides. There's also... Tor and the Tor project, which develops the software that allows anyone to be anonymous online. Um, it does have a mobile version on Android, but mainly it's, it's a desktop uh, software. And on this website, it's using the words anonymous, it's using secure, it's easy to use, it is, it's easy to get started with. So let's say that you wanted to you're not really too familiar with any of these apps, and you sort of look for an NSA-proof application. And you come across all of these tools, and they all say that they're either anonymous or they say they're secure. They have like military-grade encryption. There's not a lot of information about exactly how they work, but you're sort of not too technical, so you, you, you wouldn't really be able to verify that anyways. What do you do? Which one would you pick? And I think the problem here is that these companies use these words to attract users because there's no real, there's no good way to accurately describe what the apps are doing without being very, very technical, at which point you lose all the non-technical users. But on the other hand, there is no way for, there's no sort of standard to describe when Wicker says it's secure, or when secret says it's secure, and no one can figure out um, who's uploading which secret, what does that mean? When Tor says it's anonymous, when Tor says it's secret or secure communication, what does that mean? So it is really difficult to figure out what kind of security or what kind of anonymity different applications provide when there's no information on the website. And that's sort of why we now end up with situations where we have all of these apps. There's a ton more that I didn't even list in this talk that do the exact same thing, where you can't easily figure out which one you want to use. So I think for that, I think the only good option is to do a lot of research. So not, not all the applications that I mentioned are bad. Certainly not, are, not, not all are good, but they're not all bad. It really depends on what you want to do. If what you want to do is rant about some guy at the airport or rant about your neighbor or uh, some company in San Francisco, then maybe Snapchat is fine or maybe Secret is fine. If you want to send messages to friends securely, then maybe Tech Secure is a better option than Telegram. It really depends on what you want to do and for which reason you want to use these applications and who you want to use them with, I think. Um, 
And I figured I would leave it at that, um, and I look forward to hearing your questions. <laughs>